welcome to another episode of Spectacular Mag Shorts. I'm your host, Phyllis Coley. And today we are going to talk about wisdom. We're gonna talk about the village approach to wisdom. We're gonna talk about black genius. And then we're gonna talk and we're gonna tie that all in with how those things are going to be accelerated using money from a grant from the Duke Energy Foundation. It's a social justice and racial equity grant. Here to talk to me about all of that is William Jackson, who is the chief dreamer at the Village of Wisdom. Hi, William. Hey, Ms. Villas, how are you doing? So good to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here today. So talk about the Village of Wisdom. Tell us all about it. Yeah, happy to. So uh, Village of Wisdom is an organization and we protect Black genius. Uh, we do that by translating the wisdom of Black parents into mm -hmm. culturally affirming learning strategies. And what we mean when we say culturally affirming learning strategies, we mean uh, instructional strategies that make Black children feel good about being Black, but also challenge them intellectually. So really pushing both their academic identity development and their racial identity development. And you and how do you do that? What, what methodology do you use? Yeah, so uh, all of our methodologies are kind of framed under the Black Genius Framework. Okay. Uh, so we literally, uh, like we said, translated the wisdom of Black parents from our early conversations with them. And we asked them, you know, what would an ideal learning environment look like? What would your dreams of an ideal learning environment look like? Now we call them dream assessments. And what parents told us is that, you know, they wanted learning environments where their kids could trust the teachers. They wanted learning environments where there was more Black history present. And they wanted learning environments that really leveraged the interest of their children. Um, and so those are three of the six Black Genius elements. And what we do is we really look for strategies that do that well, right? So what is the teacher doing to really leverage the interest of a Black child? What is the teacher doing to bring Black history into the instruction? What is the teacher doing to build trusting relationships? And then we actually ask the parents to go and validate that, right? So like, based on your experience uh, as a parent, and looking at what the teacher is doing and hearing how your child is experiencing that, do you feel like this is a space that's really validating your child in that way? And so then that puts parents in a powerful position because now I get to be the person who says like, this is working or is not working. Um, so it's, it's about power for us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that power will equate to racial equity at some point. Yes, exactly, exactly. I mean, that's, yeah, yeah, that's the point. That's that's you know that's the uh, that's the dream, right? Like that's where we're getting mm -hmm. to. And we actually, you know, we believe it so much. We put it on a T-shirt. We said liberation is inevitable. Um, but racial equity is about power, right? Like it is because one group has more power than the other to make these decisions that are going to always benefit them at the detriment at the detriment of others. And so we have to disrupt that. And that means putting parents in powerful powerful positions so that they can make decisions that impact their child's learning because they know their child best. Yes, exactly. 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 <laughs> so um, with the grant that you received, how mm -hmm. will this um, move your uh, work forward? Yeah, so we, by the time we received this grant, we had already started our pilot uh, project with the community-based participatory research that I was telling you about, which was putting parents in a place of a researcher or an evaluator to determine what would culturally affirming learning look like in online and at-home learning environments. And that was key, as you might imagine right now in the middle of COVID, because kids are learning online and at home. And so our dream assessment this time around was really about what does cultural affirmation look like in those spaces? So we've already actually done the focus groups with the parent researchers and they've uh, interviewed other parents, they've interviewed students, they've interviewed teachers to really understand what their dreams for these environments would look like. And now it's time for us to design um, these culturally affirming learning environments based on what the parents found out. So we've actually uh, recruited some uh, amazing black parent homeschoolers who've been doing this type of stuff for a long time. Um, and we're asking them to help us design strategies that will work well at home and, and online because they've been doing this for a while, right? So who better to kind of talk to is other black parents who've been acting as instructors and educators. And then um, this grant not only is going to help us talk to them, but it's going to help us translate those ideas 
into a digestible and attractive social media social media elements right so imagine going and scrolling through instagram and kind of seeing a picture that identifies a strategy and a, and a tip that you can do in your home um and what we've seen in the past is is that that type of social media sharing uh, it's highly effective. It gets a lot of shares. It gets a lot of likes. Um, it gets a lot of uptake. And so we're really trying to um, meet people where they are with these strategies and tools. So the strategies and tools, will these just will it just be for homeschoolers, which right now almost everybody is a homeschooler? But mm -hmm. will or will it when we're at school? You know, whenever we're back in school. Yeah. Um, will they be used within the schools as, as well? Yes, for sure. So. One thing is, is that the the strategy that we're using, right, the practices that we're using is this community-based participatory research, right? So that model makes sense in any context, right? So okay. next year, the big thing might be STEM. Next year, the big thing might be blended learning. Mm -hmm. um, but what we also know about the moment is, is that now that schools have given out basically uh, laptops to every child in their district, Yes. They've given out hotspots to every child in the district. They're going to be using that stuff, right? We're going to see more blended learning. And what, what when people say blended learning, they mean learning that happens online and in the classroom. Okay. And that learning is going to definitely benefit from having these types of resources and tools present. So that type of stuff isn't going to change. But yes, we will continue to do this work, right? So what will the Duke money do? It'll help us kind of in this moment. But it's also establishing what we're calling the uh, first uh village of wisdom clearinghouse and it's going to be the village of wisdom clearinghouse of culturally affirming learning strategies and the way that you get into the clearinghouse is by having black parents validate those strategies as culturally affirming to their children fabulous um let me just ask if so when you say black this is means black is this mixed race and 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 if you have african-american if you have a they say there's a white family who has adopted an African-American kid. Can mm -hmm. they join this program and get in as well? Um, so our pro so the the kind of main programmatic element of our work is a really around training black parents themselves mm -hmm. to be uh, the researchers and the evaluators, right? So obviously, um, a white parent who's raising a black child can benefit from the strategies and tools, right? So that's the that's the part that they're going to benefit from is right. this clearinghouse. Okay full of strategies and tools, but we're really trying to leverage an experience in the black experience because that's the thing that's missing a lot of times when we start validating culturally affirming strategies. Too often that is done by white folks and they're evaluating strategies that might be culturally responsive and affirming to us, but they don't necessarily have that deep uh, experiential knowledge that we have. And so we're definitely talking about leveraging black parents when we're talking about validating those strategies and, uh, and approaches. How can a person get to this clearinghouse? How do they find the clearinghouse? Well, it's not quite ready yet, right? So that's okay, why we need right, to do okay. money. Um, but what we are doing, and, and we have a bit of like a teaser up right now, if you go to our website at villageofwisdom.org, okay. um, in the first few seconds or so, you'll see a pop-up that kind of comes up at the bottom that says, take the vow now. Um, and that is a pledge or a vow to protect Black genius. And the best way to get um, ready for the clearinghouse is to take that vow to protect black genius and what the vow is about is learning the six black genius elements um, and once you take that vow you'll be um, forwarded to our resource page which is kind of the beta version of our clearinghouse so eventually that resource page will transform itself into the clearinghouse that has all of these parent, black parent validated strategies and tools now suppose you are a black parent I'm, now i'm going to ask you know for me and all those people that are in my category but your child is adult, an adult but i still care mm -hmm. about black genius i care yeah. about the children that, that are coming through now mm -hmm. so can i get involved and yeah, I'm for sure. For people that like me. Yes, for sure. So that so when you go to take the vow to protect black genius, there's three categories. There's supporters, there's educators, and there's parents. Okay. Um, and so we, we encourage people to click whichever ones uh, seem to be most representative of you and we'll send you all of the tools. But then we'll also, the plan is, is to provide resources uh, down the road that are most relevant to those three categories. Wonderful. So when did you, when did you this when did you start this? When when did you have this vision? Um 
So, I mean, it's not just my vision, but I, I will say that the initial uh, idea for Village of Wisdom came to me around 2013. Mm -hmm. um, the organization was uh, properly incorporated in October of 2014. Okay. Um, so we've been at this for about six years now. Uh, but since then, I've had a lot of amazing team members uh, join me, a lot of amazing board members and parents themselves who've added to the vision. I, I would be really transparent and say that this clearinghouse idea was not mine. Um, there's a, a, a young woman on our staff by the name of Amber Majors okay. who uh, pitched this idea to the whole staff about three or four months ago, and we've just been running with it. My question is, has, have you had to accelerate the program because of COVID or due to COVID? Yeah, so, you know, it's funny that, so I guess it, it wasn't necessarily an acceleration. The thing I've been saying to people, you know, COVID really put into perspective a lot of things for a lot of people, right? Like Definitely. it made you really focus on what's essential. And for, for us, um, COVID really helped us kind of get clear on like, what is our goal as an organization? And our goal as an organization is to create as many culturally affirming learning environments in school and out of school as possible for black children. And so when we thought about that, what what would we do right and that's when a lot of these amazing staff members on our team came up with different ideas like our black genius breathe video that's out and available people can kind of check out um one of our staff members started the wisdom wednesday conversation which really was like the the inflection point for the clearinghouse and then like i said amber majors came through with this idea of like hey can we do a clearinghouse and basically what i've been doing is just trying to smush all these ideas together and um and present them to funders like uh, duke energy and get the resources to make these dreams come reality. That's why you're called the chief dreamer. <laughs> <laughs> and I like the name. <laughs> yes, I <laughs> Listen, thank you so, so much for visiting with me today, explaining everything about, and I know you didn't explain it all, explaining succinctly all mm -hmm. about the Village of Wisdom. Because I'm sure if we really could delve into it with you a little, it, it's just so much to cover. But I do appreciate you giving us the um, abbreviated version, but we understand. And I'm excited for this project. I'm excited for our next generation of children, for our Black youth to understand the genius in them, to understand the genius that they come from. And I'm mm -hmm. excited about that. I am so excited. So I just wish you well. I wish you well. And do know that anything that we can do, we're here for you. I have been visiting with William Jackson, who is the chief dreamer at the Village of Wisdom. They are also the recipient, one of the recipients of the Duke Energy Foundation Social Justice and Racial Equity Grant. Please visit their website. Please follow them and know that we all have something to offer. Even if, our, if we have small children, we don't have children yet, or we have adult children. We all can offer something to the Village of Wisdom. I'm sure. Phyllis Coley. You've been watching Spectacular Mag Shorts. And until next time, see ya. Spectacular Magazine, we on the scene.